Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It is rainy as all heck here, but I think it's going to be okay. So yesterday, a lot of people asked me about getting started on an operating system. Like, what advice do I have for someone who wants to get started? And this is something that I've talked about many times before, I think, but uh, I figured I could give a more concise answer. Um, so I'll start by saying that many, many people have this idea that to build an operating system, you have to start with a bootloader, and then you write a kernel, and then you get your kernel to load user space programs, and um, that's just the way that you have to do it. And I don't think that's the way you have to do it. Um, and I think a lot of potential operating system projects just die uh, because uh, someone tries going down this path, and it's not the most interesting to them, and they just lose steam and quit. Um, so uh, what I would say instead is just start anywhere. Um, if you want to build an operating system, then you probably have a somewhat uh, tangible idea in your head of what that system should be able to do. And you can sort of envision one or more of its components in the future. So just grab whichever component you think is the most interesting one right now and start building that. And so uh, I mentioned this to people, and, and they are a bit surprised, I guess. And uh, someone asked me, like, well, yeah, but how would I write something like a file manager uh, if I don't know what system calls are going to be available? And the answer to that is abstraction. So. Um, Operating system development and operating systems in general are like all about abstraction, because that's what an operating system is. It's just a huge stack of abstractions on top of a machine. Um, so if you want to get into operating system stuff, then you got to get into abstracting. Uh, and this is a very um, s sort of straightforward abstraction to do, which is um, say that you want to build a file manager, um, then you can uh, implement it on your Linux or Windows or Mac OS or whatever machine that you're using right now. Uh, but whenever you're interacting with the system, uh, you can use your own abstraction that you come up with. So say that you want to do a file system interaction, right? Like you want to uh, open this file, rename this file, stuff like that. You can write your own functions that do this uh, and design an API that you want uh, to use. And then you use that in your uh, file manager application. And then inside of those APIs, you're just calling like the Linux, um, a, the relevant Linux stuff or the relevant Windows stuff or whatever. Um, because the point here is not to implement the whole system at once, but rather to just build something that's interesting uh, while keeping it abstracted away from, from your development machine. And um, th it's, it's really simple, but like when you get the hang of it, then, then you realize that that you can actually build significant parts of a completely new system that works in a, in a different way, um, even without having that system underneath you. And it's, a, it's actually how a lot of things are developed. Um, if you look at something like uh, how, um, how new smartphones are developed, for instance, like people are writing software for things that don't exist yet. And they just use emulators and abstraction layers to simulate uh, what the hardware is going to be like once they get it. And but but like you frequently in that business, like you frequently spend months just working, um, implementing software that runs on simulated version of future hardware. And you would essentially be doing exactly the same thing here, uh, just that you are simulating your future kernel or your future system libraries or whatever. Uh, and the reason that I think this approach works so well is because it allows you to harness uh, your motivation and taking that thing that you are the most interested in working on and making it workable immediately, basically. Because um, I, I, I think, I mean, based on personal experience, but I suspect that a lot of people feel like this, like you, you might feel very curious about building an operating system and you have this idea about it. And uh, for me, that idea was always about like the desktop and how I want the desktop to feel like I'm back in the late 90s. And uh, for me, when I started building Serenity, then I wanted to get 
working on that like as soon as possible. So that was one of the very first things that I did was just start building a, a GUI. Um, that and the very <laughs> one of the very first things I did in that GUI was write this uh, code that would draw the buttons to look like um, like originally they looked like Windows 3.1. Uh, but then eventually I sort of settled for more uh, 95 plus look. Um, but that was like one of the earliest things that I worked on, just getting the button shading to look all Windows 3.1-y. And that motivated the heck out of me. And I, I was so, so super into it. And like, um, when you feel that extreme motivation to, to like work on some little thing, then you, you want to put yourself in a position where you can cut to that thing as soon as possible and uh, really like visualize the path to that point where you're writing that code that gets you so excited because if you can if you can like get yourself to that state as often as possible then um, you will successfully harness your motivation to to build whatever it is you you need to support the thing that you're doing and and that's actually how your um, operating system in this case comes into reality is that you just figure out these little goals that motivate the hell out of you and then um, you trick yourself into building the abstractions and the supporting code along the way um, I'm not I haven't thought so much about this but I, I know that this is what I'm doing to myself and I, I really do think that it would work for other people um, and because if you're if you're like naturally into programming for a long time like I've been then you know this feeling that I'm talking about where you're just super duper motivated to work on something and the best thing that you can do as a programmer is figure out how to get yourself into that state um, because you're gonna have so much fun when you're in that state and you're gonna be so productive and um, and it's just going to be really good stuff. So figure out how you can get yourself into that state. And uh, for me, that's it's all about finding that thing that I want to work on so badly, and just just like seeing the way to that place, and then just building the necessary things that I need to get there. Um, but try to get there as soon as possible, and then. By the time I get there, it's time to start figuring out something else like that, right? So you always want to have some really, really motivating little thing uh, that you're looking forward to and then you're building towards that. Um, but this was really a question about like how to get started in an operating system, right? And I think what I was just talking about is, is like it's a little bit more about how to keep going once you've started, but I think you can you you want to get started in the same way that you keep going. So they sort of blend together, really. Um, the way that you get started is to just get so motivated that you um, stop whatever it is that you're doing and then start doing this instead. So if you want to write an operating system, I would say. Don't read about it. Don't browse the internet about it. Just start writing some code. Whatever it is, whatever it is that you're interested in, anything that fits into an operating system, and that's a really big category, by the way. Uh, anything that fits into an operating system, you can start working on it right now. Uh, you don't have to look up how to do things. Just start building the thing that interests you uh, based on what you already know. Um, and just do that for a moment and just soak it in because uh, you don't need to look everything up all the time. And if you do, then I would say that's because you're not uh, familiar or comfortable enough yet with your language and, and that's a different issue and then, then you might need to spend some time doing that. But like, if you're comfortable with your programming language, then you should be able to just get started on something without having to read about it, without having to um, research it. Like, Just get started. Uh, don't wait, don't study, damn it, just <laughs> just start. Uh, and then make something kind of, you know, make something fast, but try to do it nicely. And then after you spend some time on it, then you can stop and think like, okay, well, um, 
am I building this in the right way? How do other things like this work? But get that first reference point of like starting to build something before you worry about how it should be done. Um, yeah, I guess that's my answer. So um, I was trying to be concise, and I don't know if that was, but uh, it's it's I, I just I just really hope that people can understand what I mean when I say just go start on something that interests you because it really does work. You don't have to follow anyone else's preferred path. Just make your own. Um, and you'll figure it out along the way. And you don't need tutorials or um, hand-holding or walkthroughs or these kind of things. You can use these, but let them be tools. Like, don't, don't um, treat them as dogma, but like just uh, maybe use them as a booster if you get stuck sometimes. Uh, but just start on your own and just get 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 up and running. <laughs> um, that's that's what I think about it anyway. I'm, I'm sure that there are other people who think that you should do things differently. I'm a very, very practical programmer, so that's how I do things. Um, so I guess that's thoughts I had about that. Um, so by the way, Serenity had her first birthday yesterday. How cool is that? Um, check out the, the birthday demo on my channel. <laughs> it's uh, I made a little demo of the Serenity browser loading the Serenity website and I think it turned out really cool. Um, really, really, really happy with what this project has become in just a year's time and I'm really really grateful for all of the support and all of the contributions and um, just really really awesome uh, and I hope we'll have um, equally awesome or awesome -er second year so thanks everyone for hanging out with me on the commute and uh, with me throughout the year and let's see where it goes have a great day ciao